What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April. So you guys already know what time it is. You know it's real talk Wednesday. Okay. So before we even get into this long ass real talk video, because you know how we do, we be making these long ass videos. And listen, I'm gonna tell y'all just like this. A girl is hot. Like when I say hot, not sexy hot. Because, yeah, I'm already that. No, I'm just saying. It's motherfucking hot up in this room, okay? Let me tell y'all. It's summertime here in Arizona. I think that shit has been fucking summertime here in Arizona. Like, literally, for real, it's been summertime here. It's hot. It's like 90-something degrees. And despite the fact that I have central air and also that I have this little-ass desk fan blowing on me right now and a ceiling fan on and a stand-up osculating fan on. A bitch is still hot. Like, I'm just trying to still figure out for the life of me. After living in this house for almost four years in July, yes, I have been here almost four years from New York. Why is my room the only fucking room in this goddamn house that... It's so goddamn hot. You will come, you will walk through the house and you'll be all cool. You'll be cool on the outside of my door. As soon as you walk up in this bitch, it feel like a goddamn sauna. And you would think because it's so fucking hot in here that a bitch would be a little bit hot, thinner. No, let me tell you. When I just said I had on the AC, the desk fan, the osculating fan, the ceiling fan, that's four. I'm not done because I'm about to take that clip-on fan that I be having clipped onto my headboard. And I know y'all nosy bitches have seen that shit in many of my videos. Like last year, shady bitches, okay? Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about because I got two of them, one for each side. Because you know, Mumsy got to keep cool too. And talking about Mumsy. So anyway, she got her own room. But did she just like really literally move everything almost? Not, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you know, this is her corner right there where that emoji is on the floor. And behind the dresser on the side, she got a little dollhouse, too. That pink basket right there under the table, she got some shit in. And that pink basket right there, too, she got some shit on. And some other shit, like, and her emoji pillow, okay? So, a lot of people probably so nosy, they'd be like, oh, when are you going to stop doing videos in your daughter's room? Or, oh, when are you going to show us your room? Or, oh, your daughter's room. Whatever. This is my motherfucking room, okay? But I'm not, I'm starting to think, like, it ain't no more. Like, I, I love keeping company with Mumsy because I hate being alone. But, God damn, it's taking over. Over. Okay? Now, I told y'all last week that this is one of my favorite fucking morning time meals, which is the fake ass Slim Fast, but it's by Walmart. Much cheaper. And... I'm telling you guys, it is a really great way to eat on the go, especially if you're so busy like me. But just keep in mind, TMI, you will get gassy. I mean, it all depends on your tolerance, lactose level, but for me, you know, just keep the fuck away from me. First of all, I'm trying to remember, oh, yes, okay, so, I spent, sent a special fucking shout out, a special shout out to one of my favoriteest people in the whole wide world, the bestest daughter in the whole wide world, because today, meaning Wednesday, is her birthday. So, she turned 21 today, because of course you guys know I'm doing this video on Tuesday, but when it goes up, it'll be Wednesday, so I'm just speaking like it's really Wednesday, but you guys get the gist of it. So she turned 21 today, and it's her birthday, of course, uh, duh. And I just want to send her a special shout out and let her know how much I love her, and she is the bestest daughter in the whole world. So when I say bestest, like, yes, the bestest. She's better than your daughter, and your daughter, and your daughter. I'm going to be like Oprah Winfrey right now. You get a good daughter. You get a good daughter. You get a good daughter. Good daughters for everyone. So, yes. Happy birthday, Tati. I love you so much. You're the bestest daughter in the whole world. I couldn't ask for more, and I hope you have a fabulous 21st birthday. So on that note, let's get into some real talk, talk shit. So before this real talk even, like, starts off, I have gotten a lot of emails, probably like about, when I say lot, like five or six is a lot to me, and also DMs also in my Instagram, because I have posted, like, right before The Walking Dead actually premiere with season seven 
you know, I did state that I get to watch it way before everyone else did, meaning as in time frame wise, like 7.30 in the morning, I would get to watch it when the day that it would air, which means like, you know, you get to watch it at night, but I get to watch it at 7.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask me, how was I doing this? How is this capable? I don't have cable anymore. I haven't had cable since like late December because I have been spending too much money on cable. I had like the full cable package comes with a TV, oh well, excuse me, comes with cable, comes with internet, and it comes with a house phone. Now mind you, we, we don't really use our house phone because I have like this really great deal with Cricket Mobile. If you guys have ever heard of Cricket, check them out. It's a mobile, you know, like Sprint and all of them. It's Cricket. And I only pay $107 a month for Cricket, unlimited text, unlimited calls, you know, and a certain amount of gigabytes on the data. But I only pay $107 for five lines. So each one of my kids has a line. Like the fourth, one, the fifth one is free. Okay, so I only pay $107 for five lines, and the fifth one is free. So, you know what I'm saying? Nobody ever uses the house phone. So in return, a lot of wild, a lot of wild, weird out of the ordinary people will call my house. You know what I'm saying? Whenever we would hear the house phone ring, it was like, ah, oh, damn. The only person who ever really used the house phone would be Mumsy. She would call me if I wasn't home. She's never here alone, so we didn't really need it. So anyway, I got rid of all of that except for the internet in late December. And I have like a really good internet package speed, you know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people are like, how was you doing this? How was you doing this? How are you watching these shows? And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that does this in the world. And I wanted to share this with you guys like a while ago, okay? But I had to do my research prior to just saying, oh, well, let me just tell you guys about this. Because some people would be like, oh, girl, don't tell your business. Oh, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Mm. Listen, I ain't worried about nobody, okay, and their motherfucking feelings because I'm not the only motherfucker. And I've actually spoken to the cable company when the cable guy came to install my quicker speed internet. He noticed that I had an Android box. So I know you, a lot of you guys have like Amazon Fire Sticks or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Those are Android things. There's Android boxes too. If you go on offer up like I did, you type in Android box. Now you can either buy an Android box on Amazon. This is my Android box. Um, it's not in here at the moment because it's hooked up to my TV. You know what I'm saying? So I have three of these in my house. And then I have like the Google Chrome sticks in the other two rooms. You know what I'm saying? But, so anyway, I'm going to tell you this really, really quick. If you go on, like, Amazon, you can, of course, you can buy an Android box, okay? Now, they're not going to be unlocked. Some of them will be unlocked. When I say unlocked, meaning, like, jailbroken. So, me personally, I didn't feel like getting anything shipped to me. I want to buy local, okay? So what I did, and this is, in case you guys were asking me, you want to know, this is how I did it. I went on OfferUp, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys are very familiar with the app called OfferUp, okay? If you're not familiar with OfferUp, um, just Google it. It's really simple. And let me see if I have... Let me show you the app on my phone. You know what? I am like the slowest motherfucker in the world because I can never find an app that's on my phone. Like, I don't know. Okay, here it goes. See what I'm saying? So this is offer up, all right? And of course you can't see it right now, but it's basically like better than Craigslist, all right? And you can go to Craigslist too and do it, but It'll basically, what it'll do is it'll pop up for your surrounding area. So you're not going to be able to go and offer up and search up anything in Arizona if you don't live in Arizona. And you just type in what you're looking for. So that's what I did. I went on offer up and I typed in Android boxes. And there's like a bunch of people that sell them, you know what I'm saying? So I tried to narrow my search down, which is closer to me, and find the best deal. So I found this one guy. I found a bunch of them, but I found this one guy. He will update your um, Android box. If you already have one, he'll fix it if you already have one for 20 bucks, or he'll sell you one. Guess I found the best damn guy on fucking offer up because so I went to him and his wife's home and they have everything set up in their garage. So you don't even have to go in. He has a whole bunch of different Android boxes, and I wanted the most expensive one. The most expensive one was a hundred bucks. I did my research prior to purchasing an Android box because it all depends on which one you get. So I got the OTT. Um, Android box. 
and I'll put it in below. But so he already has it loaded. When I say loaded, meaning every single movie that has ever been made in the world or is about to be made or is in movie theaters is on this box. Every single TV channel, well, I have over 2,000 live TV channels. Um, and the only thing about um, the live TV channels is when you're watching a commercial, a lot of the commercials are not in the United States. So if you live in the United States, you're going to see a commercial from the UK. And But that's really, it kind of weirded me out the first couple of times. But here's the thing. All of the shows are American shows. Like, I like to watch Investigation Discovery Channel. That's all I really watch. It has, it has to just do with crime. Crime all day. Crime all day. How they got killed. Who's killing who. That's all I like to watch because that's just me. Um, so, the commercials will be in, like, the UK. The commercials will be, like, United Kingdom commercials. You know what I'm saying? But the shows are American shows, meaning you ain't hearing nobody with crazy accents just on the commercials. And say um, I'm watching Spongebob on my cable, Android on my Android box, and my next door neighbor, because, you know, like, I'm going to say, like, Nickelodeon. I'm watching Nickelodeon, and I'm watching it with Mumsy. We're watching Spongebob at that particular time. My next door neighbor who has cable, they're not watching that because that's not Aaron. So it picks up signals from all over the world, and you watch, you know, just the shows. It has its own channels. It says Nickelodeon, USA, TNT, Love and Hip Hop, or whatever, VH1, all that stuff. You watch all of that stuff. Or you can watch the show, like, later on that day. On another section. I, it's really hard to explain, but let me tell you something. Tati loves the Kardashians, keeping up with the Kardashians, so she gets to watch it two days prior. So the reason why I'm telling you guys this, because and I wanted to wait, is because when I spoke with the cable guy, when he came to install like a higher speed internet in my house, because I, I felt like I needed it for all these boxes, um, he let me know. He was like, oh, I see you got an Android box. And I was like, he's like, that's why we're losing a lot of cable customers. So a lot of cable customers are leaving because they have Android boxes. And he said the cool thing about it is because him he himself has one. It's not illegal here in the United States. There's nothing that um, the U.S. government or whoever, they can't do anything about. You know how, like, those music websites got shut down or whatever because they were streaming music? Even though I'm streaming these movies that's already in the movie theater, there's nothing that the government or any kind of law enforcement can do about it. It's because all of the servers are in another country. You know what I'm saying? Which is cool. So that's the reason why I get commercials that are from the UK or from any other country. Because the servers are in another country. So that is how I've been saving money. Uh, my cable bill used to be $250. It is now 70 bucks a month because I only pay for the highest speed internet. So, in case you guys are wondering, that is the answer to your question. You can just look it up on YouTube, Android Boxes, and it'll tell you a world of stuff. So, that's how I save my, um, that's how I've been saving on cable, as well as that is that answers you guys' question. But it also brings me to the next thing. So, I know you guys have been shooting me, like, a lot of TV shows of what to watch. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I be late on a lot of shit, okay? I know, like, a lot of people be like, girl, you ain't watched that yet? You ain't watched that shit yet? No, bitches. Because I feel like when I find a show that I really like, I ain't about to let no other show take its place or ruin my TV experiences. So, a couple years ago, I just finished watching Sons of Anarchy. Like, I watched it on Netflix. I watched every single season on Netflix. Breaking Bad was another one. I also just got finished watching, um... <laughs> Dexter, okay, because I just couldn't get into it. So I watched every single season of Dexter twice, all right? So I'm a little bit late on things. So now I have just finished watching 13 Reasons Why, which is not really that old, but I needed something new to watch. Now, I could either watch live TV or my Android box, and sometimes it'll buffer a little bit, or not even buffer, but it'll be a little glitch. Or I could just watch other movies or other shows or, listen... <laughs> The options are endless on the Android box, but a bitch still like to watch Netflix, okay? I have had Netflix accounts since Netflix started, all right? So my bill is still only $7.99. And Netflix is $10, but I only pay 8 a month because I have been the original Netflix owner since they started out before they even did online streaming. They just did TV discs, like DVD discs. You get them in the mail. I started with that. So, my bill is only 8 bucks a month, and they keep it like that for the originals. 
So being that I'm new to all of this, a bitch has never seen certain shows. I just never thought it would be interesting to me. With that being said, let me just fix my little head wrap. Because I know I'm not the only one that is loving this show right about or has even watched this, okay? Why is the motherfucking show How to Get Away with Murder, like, um, I'm hooked to this show. Like, literally hooked to this motherfucking show right now, okay? I cannot think of the lawyer's name offhand for who plays in the show, but listen... Netflix got three seasons. I don't know if it's on TV anymore because, listen, I don't keep up with the Joneses. But if y'all watch that show, How to Get Away with Murder, please tell me how you feel about that shit because I'm like, what, bitch? This is a good-ass show. Why am I always under a motherfucking rock? And also, I heard that Grey's Anatomy was real good, too. A bitch ain't never watched that, but my best friend is telling me, bitch, you better watch that show. You better check that show out. So I am thinking about after I finish watching um, How to Get Away with Murder that we gonna watch Grey's Anatomy. Now I ain't never watched Grey's Anatomy because um, I mean let's let's be serious. Grey's Anatomy the the fucking title just throws me the fuck off. Like I'm a bitch with a potty mouth. I like I like some shit. I like adventure. I like drama. I I don't like love stories or shit like that. And honestly, I really thought Grey's Anatomy was like. The, um, that other show, Gilmore Girls. I ain't about to watch no Gilmore Girls. Who the fuck watches that? And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of you girls out there who like Gilmore Girls. I know the show ain't on no more. At least I think it ain't. But that's what I thought Grey's Anatomy was. Kind of find out, it's like more or less that show like ER with George Clooney used to play in. A bitch loved that show. I love George Clooney, okay? If he need a new wife, hello, here I am. Okay? I'm just saying. I know he's a little bit older than me, but um, I like old rich white men too. I'm saying, and he kind of easy on the eyes. You know what I'm saying? He easy on the eyes. So yes, I have been. That is what I've been doing. Sitting here watching motherfucking Netflix. Okay, now mind you, I know you guys like. You got a TV Android box. Why aren't you paying for Netflix still? I was going to cut Netflix off and I was going to cut Hulu off. But I could watch it on my phone. Okay? So when I'm sitting here at my, TV, my desk editing videos for you guys, I've been watching TV on my phone like Netflix or Hulu. Hulu is seven bucks. They got some good shit on there too. And it's also on the go. So when I'm out and about and Mumsy don't want to be bothered with nobody, here, watch watch Netflix. F find something on there while we driving. Some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Recommend a show to a bitch, all right? Let me know what other shows is good out there. Let me know how y'all feel about how to get away from murder. And should I watch Grey's Anatomy? Like, do you guys think that show is for me? Because I like to watch shit like The Walking Dead, Dexter, um, Investigation Discovery. Okay, so when you start seeing the shows that I like to watch, like Mumsy always say, Mommy, everything you like to watch, somebody's always getting killed in it all the time. I ain't saying I'm a motherfucking murderer, but I like shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I don't I don't do them love stories and I hate comedies. Like I don't like any Medea movie, okay? I don't like sitcoms that's on show like 30 minute sitcoms. That dumb shit. I don't watch stuff like that. That's just not for me. Um, but to each his own, I don't really like fucking reality TV. Like, I don't like to watch love and hip hop. Sometimes I'll watch it. It all depends on the mood I'm in. But I am not about to be the one that's going to sit here and fucking record a video talking about last night's show. Like, like people do on YouTube. Like, bitch, I could watch that shit. I don't need to hear you talk about it. I don't give a fuck about your feelings about that shit. So I don't really like reality TV shows. Um, um, I used to like to watch the Bad Girls Club with my daughter, Tati, but then that shit got to be a little bit corny because I hate to see bitches run in their mouth and then just don't pop off. Like, just shut the fuck up and let's get it popping, okay? Let's just get it popping. And so that leads me to my next thing. Now, you guys know that I have been doing, like, major Dollar Tree videos with my daughter, Mumsy, and I have seen, like, comments for, oh, I wouldn't buy that. Oh, where to waste money. Bitch, please. Bitches. Bitches, please, whoever don't like the motherfucking Dollar Tree video, why would you fucking watch it? Click on it. 
figure the fuck out. What's good for me may not be good for your podcast. However, I'm here to save everybody some money. So, with that being said, I want to show you guys something. And I know y'all probably going to think that, oh, whatever, whatever. I probably paid a lot. So, I'm really cheap and I'm I'm a very frugal shopper. I think I get guilt. I feel guilty if I buy something that's over like a certain amount of money. Like, I don't like to spend no $20 for a shirt and shit like that because I just think it's not worth it to me um, or, or certain things. So, I wanted this phone case for my Galaxy. And I seen them through um I seen them through Instagram. So I clicked on the link and they were like twenty bucks. And I was like, oh, twenty, twenty something bucks. I was like, forget that. I'm not about to spend twenty bucks on no phone case. I'm so cheap. I already got a phone case and it got a stand, you know, a little phone case. My purple one that I always be showing. It got a little stand back here. So if I wanted to pop my phone up, it'd be like a little TV. So I this was like a hand me down. <laughs> So I kept that and I kept it. So I seen the same phone case that I wanted at the Dollar Tree. Bam. There it goes. It's a mirrored phone case for my phone. And I bought it. It was only a dollar at the Dollar Tree, y'all. But I never used it because it didn't have a stand. So then the other day, I go to a dollar store again. And bam, you have the phone rings. And I showed this in another video. These were a dollar, and they were all kind of cute ones, and they got bling on them. And unfortunately, I'm sorry, you guys, you can't see it. Let me see. Let's see if I could. Okay, there you go. So there it goes, and you just open it up, and it has a little stand. Like there was, like I got a bunch of different ones, and it adheses onto the back of it, so it's really strong. So this was another dollar. This was a dollar, and then on the front, I know you guys probably can't see it, but the plastic. The shield that they sell at the, the um they sell them at the phone stores because I bought one for my son's phone. That shit was ten bucks. A dollar the exact same one. When I say the exact same one, like by the same company. So all my phone accessories are from the Dollar Tree and they're only a buck. Three dollars and I hooked my phone up. I'm saying. So on that note. We're going to stop fucking rambling, but I really would prefer you bitches to stop motherfucking um, judging all the time. When somebody likes to go somewhere on their own and they like to do shopping, regardless of where the fuck it's at, don't worry about what the fuck they buying. Worry about the fuck what your ass ain't buying or the deals you ain't getting. So, yeah. So, on that note... Let's get into this real talk video. If you want to real talk about yourself, your life, the bullshit that's been going on, please go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Put in the subject line, real talk. And on that note, let's get into it. All right, so let's get into this because I haven't talked your head off. I can't believe I talked to y'all that fucking long. OMG. Dear April, first I'd like to say thank you for all you do. I've been a loyal follower since 2009. Yes, a bitches, um, who's new to my channel since 2009. Um, this is not my first channel, so, yeah. Okay. So, here goes. <clears throat> you can call me Lily. So this past weekend, I was part of a weekend expedition just three hours away from the city where I live. And it was organized by my office. So I went with my coworkers. I'm 32 years old with a good paying job and my coworkers see me as a boss lady who minds her business and respects everyone. Anyway, we arrived at our hotel and then the boys went out for dinner and drinks. So I joined them. At midnight, I got tired and had to excuse myself back into my room. This coworker of mine... Let's call him Dixon. Dixon volunteered to drive me back to the hotel because he was ready to call it a night as well. He then saw me off to my to my room. He came in he came in to have a small chat with me and began to kiss me. No, we weren't drunk. <clears throat> no, we weren't drunk, not even tipsy. He'd been asking me out for years, but I'm nine years his senior and just don't do office romance. So I quickly stopped him. But April, I was already in cloud nine. So I let him give me head. And it was easily the best I've ever had. It was so good, I was scared to have sex with him. So I didn't. But April, when I felt his dick through his boxers, it was one I wish I could have had forever. I'm not looking to have a relationship with him, but I want that dick so bad. 
it's etched in my mind. I don't want my co-workers to lose respect for me because I'm really a very, very conservative person, but Dixon made me feel things I've never felt before. Is it bad for me to seek a little secretive co-workers with benefits type of relationship with him? Help. And again, thanks for all you do and send my love to your beautiful kids, especially my favorite little Miss Dynamite Mumsy. Love you. Mumsy gets all the freaking love, I swear. This is real talk. This is not about Mumsy today, okay? <sighs> Lily, I'll tell Mumsy for you, okay? So, Lily, listen, okay? So, y'all already fucking her. Lily went on this three, this expedition with the people from her job, okay? And it was three hours away from her house. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm not really into work romances or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, I... I, you know, I, honestly, I never even thought about it, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. The only work romance that I ever had, I ended up marrying it, okay? That's how I met my ex-husband or my husband, whatever you want to call him. Um, we met at work. He told me I was sitting in his spot, and I thought he was kind of rude. And I moved to another spot because we worked at a telemarketing place. And I got promoted to administrator assistant. So, you know, before I even got promoted, um, he started passing me love notes on the marketing floor. And then um, we just hooked up from there. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes an office romance is really not that bad. But I guess it all depends on where you work at and how catty bitches are. And believe you me, where I was working at, those little fucking ratchet bitches was catty as motherfuckers, okay? So if any of y'all Schenectady bitches is watching and you remember or know who the fuck I'm talking about or what place I used to talk, I work at, Phone Solutions, then y'all know y'all catty. Y'all so catty. But anyway, so I, I don't really think that all office romances are so, like, you know, or I don't want to do an office romance or whatever, but that's that's how I met my, my husband, through work. And it was like the best thing ever for me. But I can understand, listen, honey, listen, listen, child, listen. Sometimes it's, it's okay to have friends with benefits, okay? As long as they keep their mouth shut. If you don't want to have a relationship with him and he don't, anybody you didn't explain to me if he wanted to have a relationship with you. But if you don't want to have a relationship with him like that, maybe you should sit down and explain that to him. However, he's been asking you out for nine years. Nine months. No, excuse me. He's been asking you out for how many years? Uh, let's see. I'm not really sure how long he's been asking her out, but... She's nine years older than him, which is not a big deal, but he has been basically asking her out, asking her out, asking her out, and she has been declining. Obviously, he he, he sees something in you, okay? So he may not be too interested in having, like, those secretive flings. However, you never know where something may lead to. And what my best suggestion to you would be, is listen have a mutual agreement with one another okay let him know how you feel you ain't got to tell him listen i only want you for the dick dixon because you know you got the good eggplant i ain't saying tell a motherfucker that okay but just let him know in advance like listen i'm feeling you i like your style or whatever when i say i like your style i'm just saying that as a cover-up for like i like that dick you got going on there and that tongue action because you can't really come out and be like yo i like that tongue action and that big ass dick you got you can't say that so you gotta say i like your style i'm feeling your style i like you as a person you know and i would really like to get to know you and we can spend some time together with each other but i really don't think that it's appropriate for the work environment, you know, so I would I would like to get to know you better and I would like to hang out with you. But I would just also like for you to keep it between you and me. And when we're at work, let's just keep it professional. So that way he knows don't go to work and, and, and act like a girl. You know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, guess what? I'm dating. I'm dating Lily. Me and Lily are together. You know what I'm saying? Give him that understanding. Let him know. Because like you said, you're nine years older than him. So he might be a little more, you know, immature. And being that you're 32 years old, more or less, he is 23 years old. Damn, girl. Okay, so she got herself a 23-year-old. So he got some... 
he got some, you know, energy. He got a whole lot of motherfucking energy, okay? And he young, so he probably could do some shit to you that would make your motherfucking toes curl and your head spin around like you was the motherfucking exorcist, bitch, okay? But... Try not to get so caught up to where your office, your romance is getting back to your co-workers. Because let me tell you something. You don't want to lose your job because of some dick. Now, like you said, it's a good paying job. It's a good paying job. However, you don't want to lose your fucking coins for no dick. Now, also, things that you haven't told me. What is your position at work? You know. You said that the people at your job feel like you're like a boss lady because you mind your business. You didn't say you were the boss. So if you're not higher up than him, meaning you're not human resources, you're not a manager, you're not a shift leader, you're not a supervisor, you're just a regular person at work, then, you know what I'm saying? Have an agreement with him about how the how it should go, how the, how the romance flow should go. But if you're like his boss... You know what I'm saying? Or the HR person, then Lily, stay your ass far the fuck away from old boy, okay? Because me personally, now that I start thinking about it, you never know what somebody's real intentions could be. And unfortunately, we have to think like that in the real world these days because people have all kind of undermined shit up under their sleeve, like on some real shit. You would hate to feel like, oh, this dude has been coming at me for all this time, but in reality, he got some hidden agenda. You know what I'm saying? If you are higher up above him, if you are a superior above him, he might have some shit to where he's like, you know what? I'm going to try to get her in the bed and try to blackmail her ass. You know, people think of all kind of weird shit. And though I would never think that way to do to a person, you never know what the next person is doing. So now that I think about it, you got to be really careful. So if you have certain entitlements that is above and beyond his, because you're 32 and he's 23, I would really consider fucking with him, okay? Like, seriously, when I say fucking with him, not like, hey, I'm fucking with you, I'm fucking with you. I mean, literally, like, fucking with him, okay? If he gave you some head, bitch, and that was the best head you ever had, listen, that still that head could get you in some trouble. So you just want to basically... Put the caution sign up. Like I said, if you have some entitlement that is way beyond his control, like you above him, you know, like, I don't want to ever think that anybody is above anybody because nobody ain't above anybody. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what the fuck you do for a living. I don't give a fuck if you was Donald Trump. You ain't better than me. Don't make you better than me. However, let's say this, because I don't know what type of job you have. Let's say he's a cashier. And you the CEO of motherfucking Walgreens or Walmart, okay? So he the cashier of, Wal of Walmart and you the motherfucking CEO of Walmart. Bitch, he could be like, yeah, I was fucking the CEO and she did this to me and she did that to me. And that's why I didn't get this promotion and that's why I didn't get that. If, if that's the case, maybe, like in that kind of scenario, then you don't need to fuck with him, Okay. Some things are just left better not touch. Now, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I ain't pretty sure I know for a fact that that motherfucker ain't the only one with some good dick and good tongue game, okay? Because trust a bitch when she tell you, I got me one, okay? Yeah, okay? Listen, a bitch got some game too, okay? <laughs> He ain't the only good motherfucker in the world with a good dick and a big dick and a good tongue game. Because remember, I did say I met the one that I had at work too. Funny how you meet the ones at work, they got the best package sometimes. But he ain't the only motherfucker in the world. And sometimes when we alone, we lonely, we get a little vulnerable, okay? We get a little vulnerable. And it's always nice to have somebody hit on us. I mean... You know, because it makes us feel still beautiful as women and still wanted and sexy. You know what I'm saying? When 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 men try to hit on me, I like it. I blush, but I don't take it any further. It just, just lets me know that I still got it, okay? To some people, I might not still got it, but to some, I may. You know what I'm saying? Some people may, might be like, oh, bitch, you ugly, okay? Or your teeth is crooked or whatever. But to some, it'd be like, oh, look at her. She cute, her little freckle face, missing teeth on the side and shit. And gap and up. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. 
It is what it is to each his own, but I'm going to just tell you this. He ain't the only motherfucker out there with big dick, and he ain't the only motherfucker out there with some good tongue game. And with that being said, don't let that shit get you fucked up at the workplace, okay? It's nice to have um, some shit where sometimes, you know, it's friends with benefits. Trust me when I tell you guys, I have had that already since I've lived here um, when I first moved here. Well, not when I first, but, you know, within, like, Probably like about seven months after I lived here, seven, eight months. Was it? Uh, it probably was like a year. Like a year after I moved here. It's nice to have friends with benefits sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Because then you ain't got to feel committed. And like a person like myself, my goals in life are to make money and to just be comfortable and take care of my kids and just to be happy. That's my goals. But my goals for right now is to just do April. And when I say do April, I don't mean go wild, party, fuck everybody, because that is not even my do April intentions. My do April is get these videos done, make these wigs, and try to better yourself and get ahead in life. That's my goals. And with that, I need to make money. So with that being said, I'm not worried about no relationship with no fucking body, okay? But when you're not worried about a relationship with somebody, sometimes you do need that dick in your life. You do need it, okay? Trust and believe you do need sometimes to get the eggplant. However, when you are not in a committed relationship and you're not in a relationship with anybody at all, you do get lonely. When you're career driven or you're goal driven, we do get lonely as people. We do need companionship. So uh, sometimes I do get lonely. Sometimes I do wish that, damn, I wish that my ex-husband was here with me right now because he's in New York. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We call. He speaks to me every every now and then. Not every now and then, excuse me, like every day. Uh, but, you know what I'm saying? I miss that love. I miss that affection. I miss the sex part. Um, so I haven't had sex in, God, almost over a year. But that's not my concern. I'm, I'm not really, like, sex-driven. If I don't get it, I don't get it. And besides that, a bitch got toys, okay? I got motherfucking glass dildos. I got a motherfucking hand. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm not saying this is what I do, but if I do, that's not your motherfucking business. But I'm just saying, a bitch got toys. So, for me, I would rather just be goal-oriented and get what I need to be done. I'm not trying to allow no stray motherfucker up around me who ain't worth shit. You know what I'm saying? Who gonna take from me like the last motherfucker that I had. You know what I'm saying? Who I had to send back to New York packing. That's not what this is about. So, I have learned my lesson with that. But I've also had the guy that I have known since I moved here or not just, you know what I'm saying, who, he was a friends with benefits, all right? Even though he felt like we should have something more, he wanted to be my boyfriend and he wanted me to be his girlfriend. He just wasn't that type of dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he had a big dick. Yeah, he had good tongue action too. However, the type of person he was, he was just all into himself. I'm not into dudes are men that are all into themselves and think it's all about them because those are the cocky ones. And with the cocky ones, there comes a whole lot of other mess that I just don't got time for. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I made him my just friends with benefits. Nigga, stay over there and I'm going to stay here. And when I need some, I will give you a call. When you need some, um, you can call me. And that's how it was for me. Um, I don't speak with him anymore. Um, because I just got tired of you texting me for that same shit all the time. And I just started realizing like, you know what? You, you just starting to become real irritating and obnoxious to me and I don't have time for it. And for that, the type of person I am, I'm really happy sometimes when I'm not in a relationship and I ain't got nobody stressing me and breathing down my motherfucking back. You know what I'm saying? It's good to be in a relationship sometimes and it's nice to have a man or a woman and be in a relationship. But with that, it comes a whole lot of other bullshit and stress. And a bitch like me, I don't have time for it. Like, I am not about to let anybody, when I say anybody, I don't let nobody stress me the fuck out. And I'm not about to. You know what I'm saying? My first priority in life is my kids. And then second is making money. Because if I don't make no money, I can't take care of my kids. Okay? So that's, you know what I'm saying? That is my goals in life. So I don't really have time for a relationship. And if I did have time, I'm probably so guarded that I would probably make you my friends with benefits. It is what it is. But I'm telling you like this, Lily. If your title is above his at work, please use caution because you don't want to lose anything you have over a piece of dick. My suggestion would honestly be, you know, you got what you could out of it. You know what I'm saying? You enjoyed your shit. You enjoyed your time. Move on to the next. I'm pretty sure that 
there is a more mature man out there that is more in your age bracket that ain't at your motherfucking job that could satisfy and please you. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it may take some time, but it always happens to the best of us. Somebody will come along for you, but don't jeopardize what the fuck you got. Okay? So with that being said, let's just move on. Okay, so on to the next. Now, remember I said niggas, men, you know what I'm saying? Like... How many times have I said that people in general in relationships will fuck up your shit, okay? Fuck up your life, fuck your head up. Just be very careful of who you get into a relationship with. Take it from me. Trust me when I tell you this. So with that being said, hey, April, I wrote to you before about this great guy I had. But was wondering if I should tell him that I've never had an orgasm. So I'm not really sure if you guys remember that. This was like last year. She wrote to me. A young lady wrote to me. And she was with this guy. He was great. But she never had an orgasm. And she should, should she tell him or not? So this is her again writing to me. Your advice to me was don't tell him. I haven't told him in all these years. Just let it go, which I did. But what, I, what I'm about to tell you is one for the record books about this same great guy. So she's still with the same great guy. Well, anyway, backstory. You can call him RC and you can call me star. <clears throat> RC and I have been friends for well over 13 years. Our relationship started out being really good friends. The kind that share all our secrets and tell each other everything. Eventually the relationship evolved into something more. Now, R.C. knew I was going through a divorce, and he said he was going through one as well. Once my divorce was final, I ended up getting my own place, and I told R.C. as much as I love him, I don't want to live with a married man. Because like I said, she was dating him, and she just got a divorce, and he was in the process of getting divorced, but she was already divorced. He didn't get divorced yet. Okay? So he agreed, and she didn't want to live with a married man. Okay? I want to do everything the right way is what he told her. He agreed. And a few months later, he came to me and said that this, his divorce was finally final. So I let him move in with me and everything was great for about four months until one day while he was at work, a sheriff knocked on my door to serve him divorce papers. At first he tried to act shocked, but eventually told the truth saying he knew he wasn't technically divorced but he knew it was about to happen lie hashtag lie lie number two lie number two because the first one was he was divorced already lie number two he claims he has a job transfer in florida we went to florida to, to secure a place to stay to live at and all of a sudden when it was time to turn into the paperwork of where we was going to live, there was always an excuse of why we can't go. And mind you, I had quit my job that I cannot get back in anticipation for the move to Florida. His excuse, the job isn't ready. Lie number three, my brother and his girlfriend invited us on a cruise and I was all excited to go. RC said it was paid for. RC said the cruise was paid for by him. The day before the cruise, he said he lost his wallet, so we can't go. Just a bunch of bullshit. I found out that he actually canceled the cruise without my knowledge. I kicked him out of my life faster than Jimmy John's can arrive with a sandwich. I didn't even know they delivered. But now that you say that, a bitch is hungry. Now, every day, he's either calling or texting how sorry he is. He wants to make it up to me. Baby, 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 baby. Please, baby, please. Don't give, us, don't give up on us or me. I know I have made mistakes, plural. Like I told him, it's over. There is no way for me to forgive you. You lie just as well as you breathe. Oh, and the kicker is this. Since I won't take him back, now, all of a sudden, he has prostate cancer. I'm so over him and his lies. I don't know if he has had it. I don't know if he has it or not, meaning the prostate cancer. But what I do know is that if he does have it, all I can do is pray for him and keep him moving. What are your thoughts? Am I being hard on him? Okay, listen, Star. So Star has been with this guy. This is the guy that she originally told me about that his tongue game is whack. Or, and his dick game, I guess, because he ain't never gave her an orgasm. But they've been together for a minute. 
I'm sorry, but, and, you know, sex isn't everything. And he was a really great guy. So she didn't know how to tell him or should she tell him. I said, told her no, because sometimes what you can tell a person can really, really scar them and hurt him. And some things are just left better yet not said. And I'm not going to front. I'm not the only one who has pretended to enjoy sex. Never with my husband, but with that asshole that I just got rid of a year ago, his dick was so whack. His tongue game was horrible. Okay. Listen, a bitch got tired of faking the fuck. All right. Mouth all dry. Cause I'm trying to pretend to breathe and, and like the shit when I'm laying there with my eyes rolling up at the top of my motherfucking head. Like I wish this little dick not knowing how to fucking eat pussy nigga would get the fuck off me with his fat fucking ass. But that's just, a, that's for another video. But I'm just saying. So some things you got to just not tell people because it'll really scorn them. And then some dudes, when you tell them, all oh, your dick game is whack, they think you just joking and they think they really can stroke. You know, they think you joking and they think they really stroke it. Well, no, honey, you're not. Anyway, listen, she never told him. She said he was a great guy. They both were married. She finally got her divorce. She moved out on her own. He wanted to move in with her. She said she didn't want him to live with her because... His divorce wasn't final. He agreed, I want to do everything the right way. So months later, he finally said to her, his divorce was finalized, and she allowed him to move in. Four months into the living arrangement, the sheriffs come knocking on her doors, serving him with the final divorce papers. So that means that old dude, R.C., so that's what we call him, was lying the whole fucking time. He never was divorced. He still was married. Even though you were finalizing shit, don't be so petty as to keep a secret. So that's the first lie that she's caught him in. Who knows what was before that? Second lie was he was getting a job transfer to Florida. Now, mind you, they live in one state. She quit her motherfucking job. Shirley quit her job to relocate to Florida because of his job offer and transfer. So he must have supposedly had a really good job offer, supposedly, for her to quit her own job. That never fell through because he kept saying the job wasn't ready. She knew it was some bullshit. That's lie number two, okay, that she's caught him in. Like I said, there could be more lies ahead of that. The third lie was Shirley's brother invited her and her boyfriend along on a cruise with him and his girlfriend. Shirley's boyfriend said it was all paid for, okay? But the day before the cruise, he said he lost his wallet, now, at first I was thinking, why would he say he lost his wallet if the trip was already paid for? The cruise. He probably said he lost his wallet because he had all of his ID in there, okay? And, you know, if you're on a cruise, you do need your ID because you're going into other territories that might be, like, on foreign lands or might be his passport. Whatever the fact, the case may be, he lost it. Whatever. Credit cards, all his money, everything tied up into his wallet. I get that. But she found out in the long run that he canceled the trip. They weren't going. So I guess her brother and his sister got to go or nobody got to fucking go. So after that, she just got rid of him. Now he's like, baby, 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 baby please, begging. The nigga got prostate cancer now. Is she being hard on him for telling him no and she could just pray for him? Let me tell you something. Once a liar... Like they say, always lie. You done caught this dude in some petty ass fucking lies. Three lies. They're not, you know what? I can't even say that they were petty lies because for one, the divorce thing, he lied about that. I mean, that is kind of petty to me because even though he was in the process of getting divorced, that was still a little bit petty lie. But the major one that I feel like that was really major is the second lie because you quit your job that you cannot get back on account of him telling you that you guys are going to relocate to Florida. So to me, that was the biggest fucking lie out of them all. And for that, I wouldn't even have fucked with him. That would have been the final straw for me right there because I just lost my, my source of income behind your derelict non-orgasm ass. Like, you can't even fuck right or eat pussy right. And I lost my fucking source of income. Are you crazy? Let me tell you something, okay? I would have never quit my job in the first place. That motherfucker would have had to move there first and I would have had to come visit to, just to verify that shit because you already been through some shit in a relationship and that's why you got divorced. That was just, that's just me. But me personally, I would have never allowed him to move in with me anyway. 
that I would not have fucking done because I just left a relationship. You just had a divorce and moved out. Why the fuck would you want to live with somebody else just like that? Like, that's just my take on it. You know what I'm saying? That was the issue that I had. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I lived alone for like two and a half years and then I let this nigga come live with me. I just, just kept living alone because I was just so into my own space and my own world. You know what I'm saying? That when I had somebody live with me, I felt like it was corrupted. You interfered with everything. And he totally did. He toxicated everything in my life for that short period. Okay. That short period ended up being like just so traumatic for me and just, just so devastating. But I got over that. However, you know what I'm saying? Should you feel bad for him? I Honestly, in my opinion, I don't think that motherfucker has prostate cancer. You know what I'm saying? And if he does have prostate cancer, that ain't your problem. That's not your fault, okay? Now, here's the thing, and I know this is probably going to be cruel to say, his dick game was whack in the first place, okay? He couldn't fuck anyway, and he damn sure couldn't eat pussy right. Now your prostate is acting up? Well, you're really no use, okay? Like, who needs you? You have prostate cancer. So basically what he's telling you is he's going to die. Okay. So, and if you get back into his life, Shirley, all of a sudden he's going to get cured and he's going to be okay because you have come back into his life. Let me tell you something. Once a liar, always a liar. He has done some downright dirty, grimy bullshit to you. And all you can do is pray for him. If he has prostate cancer, pray for him. But the number one thing is just pray for him in general because he's a fucked up individual who goes around and tells story times to motherfuckers like you're making up motherfucking stories like it's one thing to tell a lie to get out of trouble like to get out of some serious shit but to make up stories just because is not cool at all and with those type of people you just really need to keep away from them i have a family member my cousin and she you know what i'm saying i love her to death we are like really cool with each other i love her to death but she lies so fucking much okay and i have pretty sure i have told you guys about her a lot okay not the bald headed one with the hairline all the way back here okay who be just texting me or she don't text me no more because i had to let her know about herself but she was a user but my like user like bitch oh hey girl can i get a wig i ain't speak to you in like two years get the fuck out of here but my other cousin who i have grown up with i love her to death but she is a liar like a little liar and a thief okay she has stayed with me in new york and she stole my motherfucking leather jacket all right she stole my jacket told her mom in um that her boyfriend bought this jacket to match her tim boots like i had to threaten her mom and her like if you don't bring my shit back upstate new york bitch i'm gonna come on the next motherfucking thing smoking i'm gonna fuck you up for my shit okay I let that go. I let that slide. But on top of that, she just be lying. She makes up so many stories saying how she's had all these miscarriages when you can't even have kids. She doesn't tell me that she does. she's had miscarriages because I already know the deal. But she has told our friends, like we have friends in common, that she's had miscarriages upon miscarriages. And bitch, you never can get pregnant. Okay? You've had an operation when you was like 14. You can't have kids. Cut it out. So... She's a hypothetical liar. She just like constantly, con a hypo just always lies, just lies and lies and lies and lies. She makes up stories, okay? She constantly makes up stories. So with those type of people, I just try to stay away from them because you just lie for no reason. And like, it's just, just dreadful. Like it's irritating also. So... I don't feel sorry for him and I don't feel like you should feel sorry for him. If he has prostate cancer, then unfortunately, when I say this, he ain't the only motherfucker in the world with prostate cancer. You know what I'm saying? Go get yourself taken care of. There are a lot of people in the world with different ailments, but don't try to use your ailment as a way for me to come back into your life for sympathy. You know what I'm saying? Don't use your motherfucking ailment for sympathy because that's not what we do in the real world. Be a motherfucking man and take your fucking shit and deal with it, okay? However, I wouldn't feel sorry for him. What I would basically do is I would block his ass from any type of contact because all he's doing is stressing you to 
fuck out. And I'm sorry, but I'm not about to let no motherfucker stress me the fuck out about his prostate cancer, his dick game, his mouth game, his wallet game, his job game, none of that. He is a liar, a big time liar. And the only thing that he needs praying for is the fact of who he is as a person. Pray for him because one day, God forbid, but one day his lies may get him in a whole series of trouble that he just don't want to deal with. So for that, what I would tell you is just pray for him as a person, but block him out of your life because you've already been through enough. You have gotten a divorce. And I'm pretty sure when we divorce somebody, it's not because we love them so much and they're just a great person, but we just don't have nothing else to do that motherfucking day. Okay. It's because they're an asshole. Okay. You're a motherfucking asshole. Don't feel bad. Just pray for the motherfucker. Pray for him that he seeks help. When I say help, help in general for whatever the fuck his problem is in life. It just seems like he's got a whole lot of tattertailing and storytelling and whatever else. And God knows you caught him in three lies. Three strikes you out. I always tell people that shit. Sometimes you don't even get three motherfucking strikes. If you a divorcee, bitch, you don't get but one motherfucking time with me. And after that, I am not fucking with your dumb ass on some real shit. I'm not. I'm just not. So three strikes you out. But those are three lies that you caught him in. Okay. Who's to say he's got a whole bunch of other lies that you didn't catch his ass in. So me personally, I would just leave him the fuck alone. And me personally, I wouldn't feel bad. Don't allow yourself and your self-conscious to feel bad because you don't want to be bothered with somebody that's toxic and not good for you. You know what I'm saying? Don't allow that shit because that's all he wants you to do. And if you keep continuing to feel bad, then he winning. Whether he know it or not, or whether you know it or not, that nigga winning. And eventually your ass might just cave the fuck in and give in to him. Leave him the fuck alone. Let his lying motherfucking ass go ahead somewhere and let him be somebody else's fucking headache. Maybe from this experience, he'll learn his motherfucking le um, his lesson. Maybe that's why his ass got divorced. You say that he, he, he might have came to you and said, oh, he don't want to be with his wife because of et cetera, et cetera. But you don't really know the whole reason why he got divorced. And now I'm starting to see a different reason of why his punk ass got divorced. He didn't divorce. The bitch that he was with divorced him. Leave him the fuck alone, girlfriend. Do not feel bad. He done fucked up your source of income. He done fucked up your vacation time. He done fucked up your head. Leave him the fuck alone. And now you know for the next motherfucking time, don't let no stray dogs come up in your motherfucking house, okay? Because it don't matter how long you known a person, you really don't fucking know them until you start living with that bitches, okay? Take it from me. Trust me when I tell you. Ain't nobody coming up in here to live no more except my motherfucking kids. And I'm not even allowing all my motherfucking kids to live here, okay? Hmm. So this is going to be the last real talk of the week. The last run of the day, rather. And this one is, um, it's not long, but the picture is oh so beautiful. Hey, Diva, how you doing? Giving you those Wendy William vibes right about now. First off, I just want to say, girl, I watch you all the goddamn time. Like, when I'm making my wigs and shit... I got your long ass real talk videos on and they really cheer me up, Diva. You're a friend in my head for real. I love the way you hustle. It really inspires me. Anyway, you can call me Catrice because why the hell not? All right. I'm 21 and I live in Britain. Yes, honey. Drinking tea with the queen. Deling. Ha ha. Only playing. I am transgendered, meaning I was born a male and now I live as a girl. I transitioned in my teens and I underwent hormone replacement therapy, but haven't yet had the operation because it's very expensive. School was very rough and I was there on and off until I left at 15 without any qualifications or papers. I became totally miserable for real. Fucking sucked big time until I started hustling and getting coins for doing hair and all that shit. Anyway, a few years ago by, I mean, I was 19, I started feeling like I was working all the time but not really getting anywhere in my personal life. And I still lived at home with my mom. I love the way they say mom, mom, M-U-M. Um, I started messing around on these online dating sites, and yo, that shit is not to be messed around with lightly, for real. The killer is round every goddamn corner, and you can't be too careful. 
Anyway, I was foolish and started talking to this guy that we can call Jack. He was super sweet from the offset, and I told him about me being born in the wrong body and all that shit. And he, and he seemed to back off a bit, which I expected, but he came around and we decided to meet. He was charming and kind and everything was great. Cut a long story short, a few months later, he says he has no choice but to move in with me, and his parents had kicked him the fuck out. He said he loved me so much, my mom was hesitant, but he moved in. He started grabbing me and hurting me and shouting at me under my mama's roof like, who the hell you think you talking to in my goddamn house, fool? He would eat all the food and not pay a penny. He would expect really expensive Christmas birthday presents and was totally materialistic, whereas I am a minimalist and I am very frugal. Hey, what's up, a diva, another frugal friend over here for real. Anyway, we soon moved out for my mom, for my mamas, and the cunt would rape me in my motherfucking sleep from behind and would put his arms around my throat so I couldn't get him off or scream. And girl, I don't know about you, but I don't like anal sex, especially when I'm motherfucking fast at fucking and, and sleeping. My private parts are always covered up because it disgusts me, and he made me feel even more worthless. He identifies as straight, yet he fucked me in the ass when I was asleep because I wouldn't let him when I was awake. And he asked on multiple occasions if he could play with my dick. What the fuck, cunt? Can you not hear me? I said I can't even look at that area, let alone let a motherfucking other person touch me or look at me down there. Are you fucking kidding me? I was paying all the rent, all the bills, everything for this motherfucker because he couldn't be bothered to get a job. All his food, doing all his washing. I even picked up another job working at a supermarket doing 12-hour shifts. And at one point didn't have one day off over a 60-day period just to make ends meet for this no-good son of a bitch. Things got worse and worse. And every time I, would, I told him that I think he should leave, he would just get even more controlling and nasty towards me. Towards the end, he wouldn't let me call anyone unless they were on speaker. No one was allowed around, not even my 13-year-old sister because he apparently she came around just to eat his food he said i wasn't allowed anywhere without him and sometimes he would steal my bank card and phone and take the landline and lock me in he would do shit to me to scare me like in the middle of the night pretend he was a burglar breaking in the window cutting his own wrist in front of me while crying saying he never wanted to lose me and trying to drown me in the bathtub because he knew i was scared to death of water and i can't swim or hold my breath in the end, I had had enough of the fuckery and ran home to my parents. But the police got hold of him for rape, etc., and was giving a restraining order. A few years had passed until, a, excuse me, a few years passed. A few years have passed, and I still get 20 to 30 unknown calls each day. Weird emails from weird accounts, fucked up text messages from odd numbers, and empty envelopes through my door, which just with just my name and address, with his handwriting. He really is trying to scare me. I've told the police about this and they don't want to deal with it because they take the side of the straight guy rather than the transgender girl. You feel me? What should I do, April? Thanks. Here's a pic of me, by the way. Don't let the innocent little white girl look fool you. I swear I was born the wrong race, diva. And of course, the wrong gender. Gender. Ha ha. I love you much. And she's so pretty, too. And she looks so pretty. And I'm loving the whole scenery, like, seriously. The leaves and the fall background, like, totally so pretty. Wow. You know, it really, really sucks that there are so many cruel people out there in the world who just use us as people, as women, as men, as whatever gender we are, we get used. You know what I'm saying? And that's just so unfortunately unfortunate. And it's just even more unfortunate when you use someone who is a transgender, who is already trying to feel accepted in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, like, listen, I don't have no qualms with anybody, whatever sex, race, whoever you want to be with, that's your business. Look, a girl, let me tell you something. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this in like one of my other videos that was posted up the other day, my um, Dollar Tree video. These were made by my best friend's daughter. Um, and she makes these rubber band braces and I absolutely love them. So she had these and she was like, take whatever you want. Don't tell me to take whatever the fuck I want because I would take some shit, okay? But I really, these really caught my attention because they're rainbow and I love everything rainbow, okay? I just feel like we should support one another a lot. So I wear these now a lot. Um, 
sometimes I have to take them off because it gets really hot out here so they sweat but this is for support for my LGBT community like seriously you don't Though the, for those who are not part of that community, you really don't know the struggle and the shit that they go through. You know what I'm saying? Transgender, transsexual, gay, lesbian, whatever. You really don't know the struggle that they go through. So it's already hard enough in life for people that are going through things like this and who want to just be, you know, in their own skin. It's already hard because the world, like people, like I'm not gonna say like us, because I'm acceptable to every type of human being, but. A lot of people don't accept them. And what's so pathetic and sad is that somebody like this asshole going to use somebody. Like, So if you claim that you're straight, but you just see an opportunity, you're an opportunist. You know what I'm saying? You have an opportunity, so you're going to use somebody to live with them, and you're not going to pay no motherfucking bills. You're not going to do shit. You're not going to wash. You're not going to cook. You're not going to clean up. You're just going to use some fucking body. It's so hard to understand how one person, how anybody could just allow someone to just take care of them like that and not do a motherfucking thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you some type of handicapped person who in a coma and is paralyzed those are the type of people that need to be taken care of. But this type of person, like, you are able-bodied person and you feel like it's okay to use some motherfucking body, okay? And then let's not even talk about the rape situation. So you feel like you straight, but then it's okay to fuck somebody in the ass. Like, I mean, I'm not into the anal sex because that shit hurts, okay? A bitch feel like she want to throw the fuck up, all right? Trust me, I'm 42 years old. A bitch was married and has tried shit. But I'm saying, like she said, she ain't into that shit. And on top of that, she hasn't even had her full operations because the shit is expensive. So with her feeling like she was born into the wrong body as as in she rather had been a woman, she don't really want to look at that manly body part down there, let alone let anybody play with it. So for her ex-boyfriend to say that he's straight, but he want to play with her private parts and he want to rape her in her sleep, it's a shame and it's pathetic. And that to me is really sickening. Like, like I said, I'm acceptable to all types of people, meaning non-sickening people. I don't like fucking rapists, pedophiles. I think, think that those type of people should be allowed out into society, okay? And maybe some people may disagree with me, but I just feel like if you are someone who goes around raping people, either it's an adult or a child, I really don't think that you should be let out into society. My take on that is you should get fucking raped in jail. That's just, that's just how I feel. And maybe that might be a little bit cold, but I just feel that fucking way. Okay. And on top of that, for, for someone to just use somebody to the, to the very bare bone is just like, so not acceptable. Like, how would you feel as a person like me personally, if I was staying with somebody, let's just say that I became homeless and I had to go stay with my best friend and her family. Don't you think that I would feel kind of like a loser because now I'm homeless, but I wouldn't want to just be like a freeloader. I would feel so kind of like out of place, not doing anything that I would have to make sure I wouldn't even have to, I would as a person make sure that things are taken care of. And if you don't have a job and you can't find a job, you know what I'm saying? But you're living with somebody still make, make yourself useful. Okay. Don't just lounge around the person's motherfucking house. It's sad when we have people out here in the world that are so useful. When I say useful, not like useful, like you so useful, girl, you so helpful, meaning user. You use everybody. You use anything and anybody until there is none. And that just really, really sucks. Like, I hate to see people like that. But unfortunately, we got that out here. There are people like that in the world. And for somebody who could be in a relationship with someone like that, I know that must really, really bother you as a person and as just like a human being in general. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like now you have a restraining order against this person, but you're still seeing all kind of weird text messages and emails and et cetera, et cetera. Now, the one thing that I can suggest to you when it comes to like the weird text messages is I would definitely change my phone number because there's all type of apps that that person can get. Um, and just text you from. So even if you block that one number today, they can go ahead and get a new number tomorrow. It's just that simple. So the number one thing that I would do first is I would change my phone number and only give it to the people that I find like that is worthy because you got a whole lot of motherfuckers out there in the world who on your phone, 
who ain't worth a motherfucking phone call or a name in your fucking phone, let alone a text message. So me personally, I would definitely go ahead and change my mom, my number. Now, if you, you did say you went back home to live with your mom. Now I'm not really sure if you're still living there now, but if you are not living there and you feel like you want to move out, I wouldn't give anybody my address. Just the really pe the really close people that's in my life. Like my parents and like family members that's close enough to you that you know in your deepest heart of hearts that ain't going to leak out your information. As for the emails, you could probably change your email address too, but it might be your money maker. So with that, I would just leave the email because if you're constantly getting fucking emails from the person, you may want to save that just for evidence as well as the envelopes that are being pushed underneath your door. If you know these are his handwriting, okay, then what I would also suggest, I'm not really sure how you, how it is in Britain, British, in Britain, but out here in the United States, we don't just have one police station. We have several different police stations to seven different locations. And unfortunately, you may have to go above and beyond police officer. You may have to find yourself like a good jurisdiction that can help you. Now, I'm not really familiar with any type of foreign jurisdiction, but I, for one, would find out what else I can do besides reaching out to the police. Because if you have this evidence and you're you're constantly telling him, them, yeah, this person, he keeps sending me these letters and this is his handwriting. And if you do have something still, <clears throat> so basically the judge is the one that gave you that paper order protection. What I would do, hopefully you still have some type of evidence or some type of old letter that he has written you in the past that you can bring to court and show the judge, listen, this is evidence that he's still coming around harassing me. This is his handwriting. But like I said, also, you may have to go above and beyond the police. Unfortunately, we try to make things easier for ourselves and in hopes that the police will do something. But when they don't want to do their job, the motherfuckers just don't want to do their job. So me, I would find somebody that's above them and get a judge or someone who's above a superior of them to look at what's going on because it's harassment. And honestly, you don't really know what's going to happen next. If this person is emailing you every day, is texting you several times a day, is calling your phone every day and is slipping letters under your door, you don't know what their next move is going to be. And that's like that game of chess. You're never supposed to know the next person's move. However, in this situation, you would really want to. And unfortunately, you really don't. So you don't really know what's going to happen next. You don't know if he might decide to play burglars for real this time and climb through your motherfucking window and do something to you. You don't know if he's going to put an envelope under your door that may have anthrax in it and kill everybody in that motherfucking house. You don't know what the person is really capable of doing. Sending you an email that might have a virus that hack all your information or also on your phone. You don't really know. So me personally, I would take all that into consideration and try to contact somebody that's above the police. Each thing that you do and each thing that this person does, I would definitely document it because it's good. It's always a good idea to have all our eggs in a basket, our ducks in a row, whatever you want to call it out here. It's always good to have all the information. So that way, if you plan on seeking judgment against this person, you have everything you need and you're not the one that's going to be sitting there looking stupid. This is just my I, my plan and this is just what I, my opinion or my suggestion rather. Now, unfortunately, you know, we go through things in life where, you know what I'm saying, we it just allows us to be able to distinguish what to do next in life or what not to do. And with me, you know, I have been in like enough relationships in the past where it's like, okay, I ain't fucking with this person. I ain't fucking with that person. I'm going to stay away from this. I'm going to stay away from that. And that's just my individual take on it. Like as a person, this is just what I feel like it's best for me. So, and I already know that it's hard for you as it is because you're going through some and I'm pretty sure you want to fulfill your obligations as continuing on with your surgery and just becoming the person you want to be. And with that being said, I don't really think that having negative people in your life like that is healthy for you and is good for what you want to do as a person. I don't give a fuck if you're straight, gay, an alien, or whoever. Nobody deserves to be raped. 
and nobody deserves to be fucking used, ridiculed, or whatever you want to call it. Nobody deserves that. And me personally, I just think that people that do stuff like this to other people are like the pond scum of the earth. You know what I'm saying? And that's unfortunate. Really, really unfortunate. So, like I said, my dear, I would definitely seek out someone that's a lot superior than your local police and keep all of the pertinent information that you have so that way it can help you in the long run. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. With that being said, Catrice, I thank you for emailing me all the way from Britain. Okay? And like I said... I support everyone. So for those of you guys that's out there that don't love the LGBT community, well, I'm going to just tell you guys like this. I don't give a fuck. I've had people have emailed me, um, that's a sin. It's a sin. What a fucking sin is for you to judge somebody for what the fuck makes them happy. To me, that's what the fuck a sin is. Okay. I'm just saying. You might think like, oh, well, I'm this way, I'm that way. I love everything in life. I love everybody. And listen, you never know what type of friendships or what type of people you may make or meet, okay? You have to be open to the world, all right? And I have a lot of gay friends, okay? A lot of them. And I have a lot of transgender friends. And I welcome everybody into my life because we're human. At the end of the day, we all motherfucking human. And whose right is it to judge any motherfucking body? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You know what's so crazy? Like, I know, yeah, this is like probably off topic, but I have lived out here in Arizona for almost four years. And I have seen all kind of shit from the big fake booties out here. I mean, I have never seen so many fake asses in my fucking life on women that are like 50, 60 years old, big fake booties. Okay. It's like ugh, abnormal, abnormal fake asses. Okay. Like I'm like, damn, should I get me a butt? I'm get, I'm getting an ass injection. I'm about to get me an ass. All right. For real. Cause it's either I'm gonna do some squats or I'm gonna get an ass. Or some tea. No. I'm just fucking with y'all. I like the butt that I have. I'm not trying to walk around looking like some goddamn freak. And if you get an ass injection, that's you. But I just think that some of it is a little bit like, okay, girl, you about to burst, pop. And that might be me judging people because whatever makes you happy, if you like it, motherfuckers, I love it. But I have seen a lot of different type of people out here and a lot of different type of things and ways. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that I haven't seen is, which I would love to go see, is a um, a drag show. Okay? Like, I am, like, so amazed at, like, the drag world. Okay? I just think that the whole transformation is just, like, so fucking beautiful. Like, it's amazing to just sit there. Even though I've only been able to watch it on TV or the computer, it's just, like, fucking amazing. So, if anybody who is watching that knows of any type of drag shows in Arizona, because I have been trying to find them, and the one that I was pointed out to, they no longer do them. But... If there's anyone in Arizona that does drag or knows about the drag shows and lives out here, please invite me. Please hit me up because I would love to go out and have a great time. That's Those are things that I like to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm totally different from, like, the norm. I like to do all type of different things. Except for pop up to motherfucking swingers clubs and you don't be told that you at a swingers club and then you just dragged into one. If y'all bitches is like, what the fuck is you talking about, girl? Yes, a bitch was taken to a swingers club and I did not even know that shit until I started seeing dick and pussy all over the place. And I was like, ugh. Okay. I had to put on my New York attitude and just be like, when I was so fucking uncomfortable, okay? But anyway, on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. It was kind of like all over the place. But yes, if you guys are interested in Android boxes, go to OfferUp and look it up. This is not no sponsored video by OfferUp. I wish them bitches would pay me. But anyway, I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. And on that note, I'm going to go get some birthday shit together. And I love you guys. And I'll see you in a soon come video. Deuces. This, you already know this. She wanna buy man to come my videos. If you want murder me, eh, 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 eh.